lives at his altar. Let not our sins and transgressions now cause us to falter. Christ the High Priest, bid us all join in the feast. Vic In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. A very good evening, everyone. You're very welcome to uh, uh, St. Joseph's in Matlock. Uh, if you're a visitor, you're, you're most welcome indeed. We also welcome those who are watching online, our sick, our housebound, our parishioners, and those who watch from around the world. So we ask the Lord to be with us as we um, enter the, uh, the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We also, next weekend, um, we, uh, next week, we enter the month of November, and we have started to think about and maybe write down our list of our holy souls or who we'd like to pray for. So there is um, a basket uh, and a, a signing-in book, um, a book of remembrance, uh, on our sanctuary this evening to start our preparations for that. Also, there is um, envelopes in the, at the back of church if you want any on the way out uh, to make your lists of remembering those who have gone before you. They're available at the back of church as well. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
almighty ever living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, Shout with joy for Jacob. Hail the chief of nations. Proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them back from the land of the north and gather them from the far ends of the earth. All of them, the blind and the lame, women with child, women in labor, a great company returning here. They had left in tears. I will comfort them as I lead them back. I will guide them to streams of water by a smooth path where they will not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is, what marvels the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. What marvels the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. What marvels the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. The heathens themselves said, what marvels the, what the Lord has worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. What, what marvels, marvels the Lord, Lord worked for us. us. Indeed, Indeed, we were, we were glad. glad. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. What marvels the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. The second reading is from Hebrews. Every high priest has been taken out of mankind and is appointed to act for men in their relations with God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. And so he can sympathize with those who are ignorant or uncertain, because he too lives in the limitations of weakness. That is why he has to make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor on himself, but each one is called by God, as Aaron was. Nor did Christ give himself the glory of becoming high priest, but he had it from the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And in another text, You are a priest of the order of Melchizedek, and forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the world, says the Lord, anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus left Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting at the side of the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. And many of them scolded him and told him to keep quiet, but he only shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and called, Call him here. So they called the blind man. Courage, they said, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he jumped up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus spoke, What do you want me to do for you? Rabun, Rabuni, the blind man said. Master, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. And immediately his sight returned, and he followed him along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Would you like to be seated? I have a pastoral letter from uh, Bishop Patrick this evening. And um, so, of course, it's a very important pastoral message. And so we ask the Lord to be with us as we listen to uh, what St. Patrick wants to talk to us about. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a bill has been introduced to Parliament which proposes a radical change to the law. If passed, it will allow a terminally ill person the possibility of seeking lethal drugs from their doctor so to end their life prematurely. Proponents of this change in the law speak of assisted dying. But let's be clear, this bill isn't about giving people access to palliative care to relieve their suffering, and it isn't about a patient having the right to decide to stop life-prolonging treatment. People in this country already have these rights. No, this bill is about allowing a doctor to assist a person to take their own life, to help someone commit suicide without criminal consequences. This bill is about assisted suicide. As Catholics, we can never support assisted suicide in any situation or in any circumstance. The commandment, you shall not kill, makes clear that to deliberately kill or assist in the killing of an innocent human person is a grave violation of the moral law. This commandment demands that we value and safeguard human life at every stage of life until its natural end. It is never permissible to take a life of a human being even if the person requests it. Life is a gift from God to be treated and protected, to be treasured and protected in all its vulnerability. And it is God alone, the author of life, who will call it back to himself at the appointed hour. This respect for sacredness of life and the dignity of a human person is foundational to our care for the sick, the aged, and the most vulnerable in our society. The Church has always been a strong defender of the sanctity of life at all stages, but especially when life is at its most vulnerable, at the beginning and at its end. This bill has the potential to initiate a, a paradigm shift in how we understand, value and protect the sacredness of human life, and so to profoundly affect the very fabric of our society. Laws to legalize assisted suicide suicide, strike at the foundation of the legal order and the right to sustain all other rights, including the exercise of freedom. While real and emotional descriptions of painful suffering and dying and death resonate powerfully with all of us, the ardent desire of a few cannot outweigh our obligation to be the greater common good which includes protecting lives of all, especially the most vulnerable. 
Supporters of this legislation argue that the elderly, disabled and other vulnerable persons will be protected through a careful framing of the bill with stringent safeguardings and strict criteria. But evidence from other jurisdictions where assisted suicide has been legalized show that there is a very real danger that once, illegal, once legalized, the initial criteria can quickly become broadened. Canada, with a similar health system to ours, provides a salutary tale in regards to this. So-called medical assistant dying was introduced in a similar way to this current bill. Yet five years later, it has been rapidly expanding to include chronic illness, disability, mental health, and even to be offered to patients for reasons linked to old age, disability, or other social issues. In New Zealand, within just a year of being legalized, evidence is emerging that people are choosing euthanasia due to financial concerns, or because they felt a burden to their family, or because they felt alone or abandoned. Once exceptions are made, the evidence is clear that such legislation knows no end. Furthermore, one can only imagine the moral and emotional pressures this bill will place on our hard-pressed doctors and other medical professionals. The need for medical care is born in the vulnerability of human condition and it encompasses the responsibility to care and promote human life underpinned by the principle of do no harm. This bill risks changing forever the relationship between patient and doctor, those to whom we have always looked for medical advice and care in times of need. While some would argue that doctors have a duty of compassion and a duty to relieve their patients, suffering incurable cannot mean that this care comes to an end and compassion can be, cannot extend to taking a life of another person. In this respect, palliative care constitutes a precious and crucial instrument in the care of patients during terminal stages of illness. The excellent work of hospices across our country bear witness to what it means to holistically accompany and compassionately care for a person in their final days. Britain founded the modern hospice movement, and so it is a very sad reflection on our society that access to hospice care is a postcode lottery and that hospices in the country are so poorly funded and so heavily relied upon charitable no donations. It should be noted that in many countries where such laws have been introduced, there has been a gradual decline in funding for palliative care. Whilst it is never morally licit to take a life of an innocent person, whatever the situation or circumstance, we must also be deeply concerned by a particular context in which this bill is being introduced. It arrives at a time when the cost of cutting measures are being sought by government and public services are under uh, enormous pressure. Our greatly valued NHS is at breaking point. Social care provision is struggling Winter fuel payments are being withdrawn from our pensioners and access to high quality palliative care is, is at its best patchy and seriously underfunded. There are also a growing elderly population who need care and support, many of whom already feel a burden to their family and the public services, alongside disabled persons who struggle to get the support they need in their daily lives. As many have pointed out this debates, in this debate so far, a right to die runs the risk of very quickly turning into a duty to die, or even so, given the current state of our society. In just over uh, a month's time, on February the 29th of, of November, this bill will receive its second reading, 
This is the most this is the moment when there will be a general debate and MPs can vote in the House of Commons. So I urgently encourage you to write to your MP and share your concerns about this bill. There are tools and resources on our diocesan website to help you do this. Please join me in praying and, welcome, and working to help ensure that this bill will not be passed into law. Patrick, Bishop of Nottingham. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You each have a copy of this uh, letter from Patrick in your bulletin this evening. Um, so, um, uh, but he, uh, Patrick, uh, Bishop Patrick insisted that we read it out as well. Let us stand and pray. Shall we say the Apostles' Creed this evening? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Bartimaeus knew that the heart of Christ was open to all and full of compassion. In faith, like Bartimaeus, we ask the Lord to hear our prayers. We pray for the church throughout the world that it may show the compassion of Christ in caring for those who are in need of help and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bartimaeus knew Christ better than those who could see by the light of day, because he saw him through the light of faith. We pray for the gift of faith as we travel along life's journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those caught up in conflict, we remember especially the people of Ukraine and the Middle East. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, those who have suffered injury, and those who have lost their homes. Give them hope and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are marginalized in our world because of poverty or disability those who sit at the side of our roads today. May we help in any way we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings and for our parish family. Watch over us and guide us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, family members and friends, and those whose anniversaries occur at this time, as we, as we say together, may their, their souls, souls and the, the souls, souls of all the faithful, faithful departed, departed through the, the mercy of God, God rest in, in peace. peace. Amen. We offer these and all the prayers of our hearts to our Mother Mary, as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dear Lord, hear our prayers which we offer you in trust and in faith. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Would you like to be seated as we prepare our altar? Shall we sing hymn number 511? sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Mass intention this evening is for the people of God, for yourselves, your families, here on earth and in heaven. We especially pray for those who are homeless, those live, who live on our streets, who uh, call upon the Lord to walk with them. The Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in this Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command you celebra we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. With a bow or a handshake, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, Christy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ. In a moment, myself and Joe will distribute Holy Communion. Um, we also have gluten-free hosts. If you're gluten-free, let, let me know as you come forward. The precious blood will be available at the sacristy door. Um, also, if you don't normally receive communion in the Catholic Church, still come forward. Just put your arm across your chest. That will let me know you want a blessing. It would be my great honour to give you a Sunday blessing. Before that, shall we send a spiritual blessing of communion to those who are watching online this evening. Dear Father in heaven, let us think about the example of Bartimaeus. He could not see you, but he had faith in you. Let us call out your name this coming week in our prayers and on our witness to the gospel. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you just wait in your pew and you'll be guided forward by our welcomer this evening as we come for communion in a certain order.
this evening. Shall we um, sing him number four, hymn number four nine eight?
Just uh, one or two notices for you this evening. First of all, there's tea and coffee um, in our parish hall. We thank those who prepared that for us this evening. You're, you're most welcome. If you're a visitor, it's just through uh, next door into the hall. There's uh, tea and coffee and biscuits galore, so thank you. Um, if you can make it, that would be great. Um, in our bulletin this evening, we have a, a Lance Philpott, um, our rep for the SVP, has um, written a parish report about what's been going on so far this year and what's uh, to come in regards to um, a welcome space during this year. And now we're moving into um, having a, of course, warm space again. It also talks about um, volunteering and we, we give thanks for those in our community who volunteer to uh, come every Monday morning, Monday lunchtime, to uh, serve. It's not just about feeding people, it's about people who need are in crisis, people who need friendship, people who need to be listened to or given advice. And so, of course, we, th we thank our volunteers for doing all this um, on a Monday um, out of their free time, so thank you. Also on the back of that list, on that letter, there is a list of, a shopping list of everything as we move into winter uh, we'll, they'll need more donations now for food um, to help uh, the homeless, those struggling financially, uh, maybe um, uh, families who are struggling as well. So of course um, all, of those things, all of those things on that list are, are really what they need and people ask for. So when you go shopping maybe put that list in your pocket or in your handbag or wallet and then when you go shopping maybe just uh, um, uh, buy a few extra things um, from the shelves and if you would like to once you've paid once you've uh, bought them if you'd like to leave them in the porch of the hall um, we'll know that they belong to the warm space for that um, everything else is in your bulletin last week we um, uh, produced the financial report if you weren't here last week um, to receive a financial report of Matlock and also Hassop on the notice board there is quite a few of them left over so if you want to take yourself a, uh, a financial report on your way out please uh, grab one for yourselves it's um, uh, quite positive reading we're, we're, we're doing we're holding our own also on the, at the very back there is a, a dead list um, a holy souls list that you can write all of your loved ones names down onto and then put in an envelope with a donation if you weren't here last week or you've lost yours then there's some spare ones at the back of those. We thank uh, both uh, Chrissy for serving and uh, Chris for, uh, of course, uh, playing our organ and those who work in the background of our parish in regards to cleaning and maintenance and so on. I'll just leave you with this last thought. I read an article earlier today. A lady named Marcy. I don't really remember during when 9-11, the Twin Towers, fell and there was a picture that kept coming up in the press of a, a black woman covered in orange dust. They called her the dust lady because she was literally head to toe full of dust. She worked in the North Tower and uh, she was 12, 12 floors below where the plane hit. So she was able to get out, but as she got out, the South Tower collapsed. And so she was, um, she was um, covered in all of this dust as she tried to escape. Um, of course, people helped her, but later on in life, I read in the article, later on in life, she suffered from post-traumatic stress and depression. She also suffered um, because she became addicted to painkillers and she became an addict of painkillers. But eventually, she, after many years she, of, of a really dark life, she managed to, she couldn't work all those years after, she managed to pull herself up again and uh, get back into life on life's treadmill. But because of all those chemicals and things that she had breathed in on that day, 9-11, they made an effect and uh, actually at the age of 42 she um, contracted stomach cancer because of the after effects of 9-11. The reason why I'm telling you this is because she was a person when she was working 12 floors down from the plane crash. She was a person covered in dust. She was a person when she had post-traumatic stress disorder and, of course, depression. She was a person when she, of course, was a drug addict. 
but she was also a person when she lived her life again and she was a person when she was dying of cancer. How shall we, of course, think about how we treat human beings? This week I will write a letter to our MP and I will invite you next weekend, if you haven't got time to write your own, you'll have the opportunity to sign at the bottom of my letter so that your, your signature can go along with mine in regards to writing to my MP, if you wish. Let us stand and pray. May your sacrament, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we have now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. If that's the bishop, tell him I've read the letter. <laughs> may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So hymn number 36. Hi everyone, could you take your paperwork with you this evening? That would be great, thank you. It's all right, go for it, go for it, go for it. Go, go, go. Yeah, it's all right. We've got archery. Archery? Oh. Archery. Archery. Yeah. As you do. Duck. <laughs> Duck. <laughs> See you, all right. Yeah. Say hi to Stephen for me.